So I know you came for a reason, which was to talk about the way that you feel about yourself or who you are. Okay. So I'm just going to ask you to tell me a little bit more about that. I have this feeling that I'm invisible. Uh, it seems to manifest in the world through broken conversations, through um, incomplete availabilities. It, it's just this feeling that I'm really not, I mean, I get that I'm seen, but my soul and my words aren't seen or heard. Okay. And so that gives you the sense of just being invisible. That's the word you give to it? I give invisibility to it, yes. Okay. So what we'll do is, you know, I'm going to do the unfindable inquiry with you. And with the unfindable inquiry, I'm going to ask the question, is that you, the invisible self? And what I want you to do is whatever I'm asking you to look at, just say in response yes or no. Okay. So just keep your response to yes or no. What that does is it keeps your mind from sort of wandering off onto another trail. Mm -hmm. And it keeps you just recognizing that you have this capacity to be aware and that you're using that capacity, your own capacity to be aware, to look at thoughts, look at feelings, look at sensations as I bring them up. Okay. Okay. Again, if you have to step in and say something more than yes or no because you're confused or because for whatever reason, that's mm -hmm. fine. But just try to keep it to yes or no. I want to explain a little bit more before we start so you know what I'm doing with you. Okay. The kind of looking that I'm asking you to do is like a very basic looking that we can do. It's before we think about something, we have this capacity to be aware of thoughts. Right? Correct. Right? Or even before we give a meaning or a label to an emotion, we have the capacity to be aware that there's energy there mm -hmm. in our bodies, right? Mm -hmm. So that's the kind of looking. I often say it's like a child looking. You know, before they've learned a, lot, a big language, they just look. Right. You know? So the kind of looking that we're doing will be more interior looking at thoughts. When I pull up a thought and I say, is that thought? the invisible you, you don't have to intellectualize it at all. Mm -hmm. It's actually, you just, if an emotion responds to the thought, in other words, if you get anxious, if you feel an emotional trigger or a tightness or anything in your body when you're looking at that thought, you just say, yes, that's me. Just unapologetically just say yes, because that, what that does is helps us to go into the body then. And if you don't get a response from the body, you just say, no, that's... Because then you're seeing that it's just a word. Okay. It's just a picture that doesn't feel like you, that invisible person. Which is, that's what we're trying to find here. Yeah. Right? So I want you just to we'll start by just relaxing. Resting is awareness, or just that kind of knowingness. is The kind of knowingness that just is aware of basic colors here in the room. Okay. You know, like you're aware of light. You know, you're not in the story of Elizabeth. You're just here and you're noticing basic things that show up in your present experience. And then even though you can't really find the awareness, you know that you're aware. Because you see, because you sense, because you feel, because there's thinking happening. And then there's just an awareness of that. So it's just through the inquiry as much, as, as often as possible, it's just returning to that place where you're here presently aware. See? Beautiful. Okay. When I bring up thoughts, they're just going to be either words or pictures. And words are things like, my name is Elizabeth, uh, or any, any other words. And pictures are literally pictures that are mental pictures, mental images, that are actually happening here in the space. So if I said, look at a picture of yourself when you're 10 years old, even though we're here talking, you can see that picture if you look. Mm -hmm. Even if you have to sort of just pull away, you can see the picture of yourself. So that's a picture here I'm, I would be asking you to look at. Okay. Okay. Just relax, and we're trying to find the person who's invisible. So I want you to start just with the word invisible. And so we don't often look at words this way, but I want you to actually see if you can visualize the word. And, you know, sometimes it's helpful to close your eyes at first. Because okay. with your eyes closed, you can, for example, imagine the word in a picture frame, just seeing the word spelled out within the mm -hmm. frame. 
So you just rest as the space. There's space here, a restful, awake space. And then there's this picture frame with that word in it, sin. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're trying to find the invisible you. Is that word it? And the way that you answer is by listening to your body. If your body responds, it's yes. If not, no. No. Okay. So just continue noticing this present space, just resting in the space. And now you're not doing anything with the picture or the word. You're just letting it float there in the space. And now I want you to just sit here and wait until there seem like words that come through that seem to confirm that you're an invisible person. Something that you hear in thought that seems to prove or indicate that you're an invisible person. Just take your time, all the time you need. Well, the word that comes through is um, ugly. Um, mm. Empty. Okay, let's let's just start with that. And keep your eyes closed because we're going to come back with eyes open in a second. Okay. But I want you just to first of all look at the word ugly again. On a road sign or a picture frame, it's something that you're looking at. A word inside the frame or on the road sign. Mm -hmm. And so there's awareness, and then there's a word. See that? Mm -hmm. And we're trying to find the invisible person. Is that word it? Is that word you? Listen to your body. No. Okay. So again, now that you know that's not you, that's not the invisible person, there's nothing to do with that word. It just floats there in space. Mm -hmm. Maybe it disappears, maybe not. But now just coming back to that restful presence that's here, just that space-like awareness that is here. So now look at the word empty, where you can see each of the letters, again in a picture frame or just floating in space. Is that word you, the invisible person? Yes. Okay. So whenever a word feels like you, it just means there's an emotion or a sensation in the body that came up with the word. Take a deep breath and just bring a very gentle quality of attention to the feeling itself, but without putting a word on it. It's like being aware of having a stomach ache before you call it that. You're just aware that there's energy there. So I just want you to sit and, and let the energy be as it is. Just let it float freely in the space. As if you're not, you're not putting any words on it. You're not trying to get it to go away. You're not trying to get to change it, to understand it. You're just letting it float freely and just resting into it for a second. Now there's no right or wrong answer to any of these questions, but is that feeling itself the person who's invisible? No. Okay. So now that you know it's not you, it's not what we're trying to find, this invisible person, you just relax as that space that allows it, and you just let it float freely. Is there any, does that feeling have a picture with it, a shape or a form or a boundary or any other kind of mental image with it? An image that first popped up with like spears. Okay. So I just want you to relax and just look at that picture. That's a mental picture there in the present space of spears. So again, you're not focused down on the picture, you're just relaxed and aware, gently, of this picture. Is that picture itself the person who's invisible? No. Okay, so you just let the picture float freely. 
You see how when you see something it's not this invisible person, you can relax a bit. You can relax the intense focus, the meaning that you're placing on the picture. Just let it be there as it is. Just again noticing the, the basic space here that you could say the space in which or through which all this stuff is just coming and then disappearing. So I'm going to ask a different question now. It's more open-ended. So now I just want you just resting, and being aware, which is natural. It's, we're just here and we're aware. I want you to tell me where the invisible person is. I want you to pinpoint it to me and tell me where you feel like that is in your experience here. It could be words. It could be pictures of the past, future. It could be feeling. It could be sensation. Can it be external? It can be any, it can, anything that comes up for you. Well, what came up was I feel invisible to the people in my life. Okay. I want you to look at those words directly. I feel invisible to the people in, in my life. I don't want you to put any pictures on it yet. Just look at the words themselves. Even if you have to put it in a picture frame to where you see each letter, you see the space between letters, Notice that there can be space between each of the letters, that you're really seeing that it's a series of letters, it's words. Are those words themselves the invisible person that we're trying to find? And let your body be the, the response. If your body responds, it's yes. If not, no. No. Okay. So just relax. Let that be as it is. Are there any pictures that seem to go with those words, though, that, in other words, some mental image of the past, if you scan the past, they're like still photographs of the past. Is there some photograph that you look at that seems to confirm that you're invisible or some part of the movie of your life? Mm -hmm. Okay. So what are you looking at exactly? I'm looking at a movie of conversations with friends. And I'll be talking, and all of a sudden, they will start talking, and forget I even was speaking, and... And that's when you feel invisible. Absolutely. So I want you to look at that present memory. So there's still this, this awake space here that has the capacity to perceive the picture. You see that? Mm -hmm. So I just want you to look at that picture and tell me, is that the invisible person, is the picture itself? Before you answer, let your body be the thing that answers. You must have felt something there. So if you did, just say yes. Yes. Okay. So now just bring attention into the body, gently. Just letting the picture kind of fade for a second so you can just let the present energy float freely in the space here. Again, not trying to get it to go away, not trying to neutralize it, not trying to get it to change or even diminish, but allowing the energy to be within the space exactly as it is, which is just a way of saying no viewpoints for a second. Just resting into it. Is that feeling the person who's invisible? There's no right or wrong answer. Yes? Mm -hmm. Okay. So when a feeling feels like that person, that just means there are words or pictures coming through that seem to want to confirm that the feeling means I'm invisible. So I just want you to relax, knowing again that awareness is here able to perceive whatever words are coming through or pictures and tell me what came through when you said yes that's me that feeling and then it was just a big black spot oh, so that was the image mm -hmm. the picture is the black spot still there yes okay so I want you to look at the words black spot 
just pull that out of the mix and look at the words, the letters of it. Put it in a picture frame by itself so you can see the words. Are those words the person who's invisible? No. Okay. So just let the words kind of relax. They came through, you saw them. You saw that that's not the invisible person, which is what we're looking for. And now just let the picture of the black spot be there in the space, just floating freely, not trying to place a new meaning on it. You're just resting without thoughts, looking at a picture as if it was a painting on the wall and you're just discovering it. Is the picture itself you, the person who's invisible? No. No. Okay. So just let the picture of the black spot be as it is. You can see now you don't have to do anything with it. You know it's not the person who's invisible. It's just pick this picture. And watch, if you just do nothing with it, watch how its boundaries or its shape begins to just change naturally. You're not trying to push it away, but just watch to see how it starts to change or morph or even melt. Mm -hmm. And just describe to me how it changes. It just seems to um, become little particles and just flutter away. Flutter away? Mm -hmm. Is there any image of it left? No. I want you to know, to, to notice that there's awareness within the space of your body in the sense that you could scan, you could scan inside your legs, you could actually scan inside your stomach area. As if you were a child on an Easter egg hunt looking for that proverbial egg, you're, you're really looking for it as if it's got to be here. You're scanning without words, but what you're looking for is the person who's invisible. And I want you to scan all the areas of your body, being aware of that space within, even up through your chest and your neck and into the physical space of your head. And tell me if you bump into the person <laughs> who's invisible. Mm -hmm. uh, um, that's funny. I'm not bumping into this person. Okay. So just relax now and look anywhere else you want to look. Like even if you wanted to scan the pictures of your past, go back to your timeline, back when you were a child or a um, teenager. Are there any other pictures that seem to indicate there's a person who's invisible here? No. You don't find that? No. Okay. What about the pictures of the future? You're scanning projections of things that haven't happened yet, but they can seem real. Do you find the person that's invisible anywhere? No. Okay. Is there anything in your body that feels like there's still a person here who's invisible? Maybe a sensation, a feeling, a sense of some kind. No. So the notion about the sense of being deficient, whether the it's the story of being invisible for you, is that even when we're sitting here and we look, you can't find it. Mm. Relationship tends to bring it out for people. So other people mirror back the sense that you're invisible. Um, that's how kind of identity works. It's like, like I call it the boomerang. It's like we bring the story with us as who we think we are. It's like we throw a boomerang out and it comes back to us confirming that we're invisible. Right? Right. So when with the boomerang, you're just setting up one other person here in your life um, to see we want it to be someone who really does reflect back to you that you're invisible on a pretty regular basis, someone who triggers you a lot. And so I'd like you to just sort of tell me about the person and tell me how they seem, something about how they act or don't act seems to trigger or reflect back that you're invisible, someone specific. Okay. Um, um, 
I have a dear friend, and uh, I just, it's as if I can't talk. So when I start speaking, I somehow plant a seed for her to have her story told. And then I also am no longer telling my story. And then minutes go by, sometimes hours go by, and I'm still sitting there waiting, hello? <laughs> I was talking. Are you not aware that I was talking? Right. And it makes me feel invisible. Right. Because I either wasn't valuable enough to have my story told, right. or I really don't exist. Okay. That's a good example. So if you can just see that, that friend of yours, I can see it's bringing up something. Yeah. Yeah. So, if, so what I want to do is in the midst of what just got triggered there, I want you to see if you can find the invisible self. So I want you to look at a memory of the last time she did that. She just cut you off. And for that, you might have to close your eyes again at first because just closing your eyes helps you see those pictures more clearly. Mm -hmm. So can you see how she cut? she's cutting you off? Do you see that picture? Yes. Okay. Is that picture, you, the invisible person, and the way that you answer is just by seeing whether something is arising in the body? And that's a yes, if so. Yes, that's me, that picture. Okay. So again, now just bringing attention gently to the feeling and just letting the feeling float freely. It's like you're not putting any pictures on the feeling. You're not trying to go to words. You're resting as the space, and letting that feeling just move freely, just letting it be as it is. So just looking at that feeling by itself, there's a present energy here. And you're looking at it like the child looking for the egg. You stumbled upon this feeling. Is that feeling you, the person who's invisible? No right or wrong answer. No. No. So now that you know that it's not an invisible person, you see how it's easier just to relax and let it be as it is? Yes. You don't have to put that meaning on it for a few seconds. So I want you to go back to the picture of her face. When you look at that picture, does it seem to reflect back to you that you're someone who's invisible? No. Okay. So I want you to look at any of the scenarios with her, any of the situations where you felt triggered. Again, you're seeing them as present pictures here, memories. Do any of those memories seem to indicate that there's someone here, that you are invisible? And you answer by listening to the body. No. Okay. So I want to take it a little bit wider now, a little broader. And we're going to do the panorama inquiry, which is imagine yourself. Well, you don't have to imagine yourself because you're already sitting here. But imagine that there's a circle of people around you or in front of you. Probably I'm not one of them. It'll be people that are close to you. It could be mother, father, friends, um, partners, boss, co-worker. It could even be events and situations. Anything that you feel like triggers that sense that you're invisible. I want you to put in an imaginary chair around you. Close your eyes and just put the people and situations and events in a semicircle in front of you. The ones that have triggered that sense that you're invisible. Get the ones that really do the triggering. Take your time with that. Do you feel something? Anxiety. Anxiety. Who or what are you looking at in the circle? Uh, about eight people. Okay. Is there any one person or thing that seems to really draw your attention in? They all tend to. They all do? Yeah. Look at one in particular where there's a real strong trigger. You see the face? Yes. I want you to first see, can you see that there, that's a picture arising here within 
your own presence within an awareness that can see the picture. It kind of rest as that awareness for a second. So that picture feels like you, the invisible person. Is that you? Yeah. It's not you. Yeah. So the body didn't respond to that much. Does it feel like, well, let me ask you this, that person, the picture of that person triggered something. Can you find the invisible self that got triggered? If you look for it again, like the child looking for the Easter egg, you're scanning everywhere. Like you're looking at words, you're looking at pictures, you're looking at feelings, and you're noticing they're all arising within this basic capacity to be aware. Can you find the person who's invisible? No. no? You said a second ago that anxiety comes up when you look at that circle. Yes. When you look back at it again, does it seem to arise again? Not as strongly. Okay. So. <laughs> Look at the word anxiety. Just pull it out of the mix and put it up in a picture frame or however you can see the letters. You see that word? See that word? Mm -hmm. Is that word itself the person who's invisible? No. Okay. Do you feel the energy that you're calling anxiety? Yes. So watch the word anxiety by looking at the word you can watch it sort of fade away just the word itself now there's just this present energy to give it a name relax and let that be without words and without pictures for a second let it fl float freely here Is there anything in you that wants to say that that feeling itself is the person that's invisible? No. Okay. So just relax and rest here, letting all energies be as they are. Whatever the energy that needs to be there is just relaxing, not trying to put words on it, just allowing it in the space. Now look back at the circle. Does someone around that circle seem to mirror back to you that you're someone who's invisible? No. Nowhere? No. <laughs> do they look different now? They do. Tell me what you mean by they looking, looking different. Well, before they looked hostile and just like big God, you know, Godzilla's just ready to stomp on me and um, now they just seem normal and present. Yeah. You see how just looking for the self clears up the relationships? Yeah. Do you see that? Yeah. It's that simple. When we're always pointed outward at them, we don't notice that we're just, all we had to do was turn and see if we could find the self that's reflected back. See that? Yeah. So, now that your eyes are open, can you find a person who's invisible in the way that you came to me with that in the beginning? Is there anything about your body, anything about the visual aspect of your experience of just being here with me? Um, well, there's a lot more calmness. Yeah. Um, usually it feels like there's a hot still rod just driven between my heart and my yeah. the middle of my body right. and it seemed like it was just you know um, absorbing everything to make me invisible mm -hmm. and that's really cool and refreshing and but it's more like a tree mm -hmm. versus a good can you see the tree can you even though the, we're just sitting here and there's no tree yeah. can you see the image of the tree I, I can yeah. okay look at that image like in fact close your eyes and look at that tree see that mm -hmm. just let that be there as it is 
not trying to change even the good feelings, you see that, or trying to keep them around. Mm. Um, but is that picture of that tree an invisible person? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. So my last question, mm. hopefully, is some came to me with the belief that you're someone who's invisible. Mm -hmm. And it seemed to have proof in your life of that, right? Mm. So what's that like not to be able to find that now? I really believed that it was real. Yeah. And it's not. It's it's not even there. So it yeah. kind of messes with you a little bit. Yeah. Because it's something that's always sort of been there in a way. Yeah. It's, yeah it always felt like it was there. Right. Yeah. I had proof. I had everything I needed to say, I'm invisible. Right. And yet you managed to show me that as we go through this, I'm looking and looking and looking, and yet there's no object or thing or feeling that's it. It. And can you find it? No. Even as we sit here now, can you find this person? No, there? I looked in the tree branches. <laughs> <laughs> I looked in my toes. Um, <laughs> there is nothing there that says, this is Elizabeth invisible. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.